Hello guys, welcome back to a, another live stream. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, today we have another trading live stream uh, where we will be covering majority of, of the market and altcoins that are worth paying attention to right now. So we'll be covering Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin dominance, how the altcoin market is doing uh, according to Bitcoin dominance for an alt season. Uh, I will also be taking a recap of last week's altcoins that we mentioned, how they are doing, uh, the updates to my current positions, and I'll also give you a few top altcoins that you might have heard of uh, that have major catalysts that just went down. So Chainlink just had their SmartCon event, which is still going on. So we will cover exactly what's going on there. Uh, and also uh, Binance Coin, uh, Dot with their parachain slot auctions, Arbitrum October, there's uh, a lot of hype around that coming up. So we will cover everything today. Uh, really quick, if you're new here to the channel, my name is Dennis. I'm a crypto angel investor for the past five years, and I have invested in over 100 crypto startups. On this channel, I share my views on the market trends and investing strategy to build wealth in crypto. So uh, before we get started, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and in the chat, and we will go through everything in the end with a QA. and a And let's go ahead and jump in. So let me bring up the charts. First of all, of course, let's cover Bitcoin. So last week uh, I was covering Bitcoin's downtrend. So short term downtrend was formed last week and it looked pretty uh, it, it looked pretty probable. So we had a uh, lower high, lower low, lower high, another lower low. So I was really expecting this move to continue down to at least test 25, 24.5K. But actually, we got a pretty significant bounce before we, we revisited this low. So now uh, the chart is looking quite uncertain in my eyes. So there are really two sides of uh, the, the chart that you can see now. So first chart is that in the very short term, well, it does, does look like a new uptrend now. So we have a, a low, higher low. Technically a uh, high, sorry, higher high and technically a higher low here. And now we do have a higher high above this previous high that we made just uh, 10 days ago. So very short term. Yes, there's kind of a uptrend building. However, if you just zoom out a little bit, you see that this high here did not break above this previous high. In fact, this pattern uh, right when it touched this previous high at 27.7K is very ugly. So this um, is more like a swing failure pattern. So <clears throat> swing failure pattern. If I just Google that for you guys really quick. Uh, in trading, usually when, uh, when you have a stop hunt, this is the pattern that you usually see. So you see the previous candle will make a high where the candle close uh, swings above a certain point but doesn't close above it. And then the next time price revisits this level, you see it also doesn't close above it, but the uh, candle wick wicks much higher. So this usually signals a stop hunt where uh, market market makers and the whales, they would drive the price up to this point because they know a lot of people are waiting at that point to either enter in for a breakout long or they have a short that is set to close, but their stop loss is too close at that level. Uh, usually, this is why I don't use a automatic stop loss. I, I tend to use a manual stop loss. So this is kind of what we saw on the, on the chart here. So right at 27.7, you see we had the daily candle uh, get just above it, but right away it gets rejected down below. So this is looking very ugly. And in fact, if you just zoom to uh, three day chart or weekly chart, <laughs> these are looking really bad. So on the weekly, you see this weekly candle is directly coming back down. So all in all, I wouldn't count this as a even medium term breakout. Uh, I think chances are we are kind of in a medium term range now. So short term, yes, 
an uptrend did get established. But medium term, we are kind of in a no trade zone again. So uh, this range, if I can draw that out on the chart here. So here is the parallel channel. Uh, I keep losing these charts here. Here. So from the bottom to the top, you see pretty much right at 25K is the channel bottom. And then the channel top is right around 27. So you see this bounce came in right around the middle point at 26.5. So overall, medium term, I really can't take a conviction bet anymore on Bitcoin. I, if you want to say what Bitcoin's next move is, I really cannot tell you. So uh, luckily, though, we do have this very significant level to watch now, which is 27.7. So uh, here's my plan next. So long term. Bitcoin is still at a very good spot to just start accumulating because I have been uh, covering this very close, very uh, repeatedly for multiple weeks now. So long term, I really don't think we'll revisit uh, anything below 20K. So bottom line for me is right around this level at 21.7, this previous wick down that we had back in March. So uh, anything from 21K to... 26k that's going to be long-term accumulation for me uh so even at the current price at 27 that's very close to these ranges so a uh, long term i don't think you need to worry about it too much uh with all the fundamental events coming up just uh next next year with bitcoin having with bitcoin spot etf um everything that's lined up so i really don't think this is the time to be long-term bearish so that's why long term i'm just uh starting to accumulate and continuing to accumulate. However, medium to short term, if you're looking for a trade position, I would wait a bit and look for uh, the Bitcoin prices reaction at 27.8, let's say 28K. So the next move uh, that I'm looking forward to trade is if Bitcoin can break above this 27.8 and come down to retest it, this is a much more convincing uh, trade setup for me. And in this case, I would look for a long position and targeting somewhere around 30K. Uh, on the other hand, if we're looking for a short, then at least I would like for Bitcoin to break below 26 before, you know, counting a short term short position. So overall, not taking any uh, short term trade position on Bitcoin anymore. And in fact, on our copy trading on Fairdesk, I have closed out my Bitcoin short uh, position completely. So that's my outlook on Bitcoin. Long term, just keep accumulating. Short term, waiting for uh, potentially a breakout above 27.8K before taking a long position. Okay, next up, let's look at Ethereum. So Ethereum, very similar scenario here. Uh, last week, I was also waiting for this uh, potential downtrend to continue. So lower, uh, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. However, this uh, previous swing did not break below the previous lower low. So uh, instead, we got this pretty significant rally, actually. But you see also, similarly on Ethereum, this... Uh, rally that we had last week did not break above the previous resistance here. So you see very similar uh, swing failure pattern again, right at uh, 1730. So you see this wick and this wick got touched again. A lot of people got stopped out here, but very quickly we're getting this rejection candle here. And something more interesting also for both Bitcoin and Ethereum is that this rally came in uh, on October 1st, so right when the monthly candle was closing, right here. So even though we got this uh, significant rally, the monthly candle also looked quite ugly because this uh, candle closed quite bearish. 
So overall, again, on Ethereum, it's starting to look like a no trade zone, no trade scenario for me. So we have a uh, ranging scenario also for Ethereum. Uh, let me just remove these, this chart here to make it a little bit clearer. So range low right at 1550, range high at 730. So you can try to bet on, you know, uh, l short the range highs along the range lows, but we are already back down to the range uh, midpoint. So pretty much a no trade at the current price. Uh, so that's my outlook on Ethereum. Very similar to Bitcoin. Long term, definitely continuing to accumulate because uh, I don't think Ethereum can make long-term new lows and in fact the uh long-term very significant support level that i would like to see hold is is at 1380 this wick uh bottom of this wick here so this level is you see not that far away so overall long-term accumulating ethereum but short term similar scenario to bitcoin uh the only trade that i'm looking to take at this point is for uh, ethereum price to break above 17.3 and then come down to retest this level then i'm waiting to uh, willing to bet on a long position until this happens this range is really a no trade uh you can try to you know wait for range range high to short range low to long that's basically it so that's it for Ethereum and very quickly on Bitcoin dominance. So Bitcoin dominance is actually looking very clear. We can even zoom out to the weekly chart. Uh, so really quick recap, Bitcoin dominance uh, takes the market cap of Bitcoin divided by the overall market cap of all, uh, of all crypto. And basically how to use this chart is whenever Bitcoin dominance is in an uptrend like we are in right now, this is a period that's signaling Bitcoin is outperforming altcoins, uh, usually means altcoin, uh, we are not in an altcoin season. So you want to hold majority of your position in Bitcoin and Ethereum. And that's where that's what we are seeing right now. So uh, you see, we have higher highs and higher lows, um, Bitcoin dominance. So here we have higher high, this previous higher low, higher high, higher low, let me just clear everything here so we are uh i can draw this out for you here low high higher high higher low so now uh we're getting this bounce and we just need bitcoin dominance to break above 52 percent and then it would be even stronger uptrend for bitcoin dominance which means bitcoin is most likely going to lead the market uh, after this happens. Uh, so this is already looking quite significant. And this is telling me that uh, I would prefer to be holding Bitcoin and Ethereum for long term right now and not holding or looking to actively get into altcoins as long term position right now. So that's what Bitcoin dominance is telling me. We are not in an alt season. Uh, and yeah, so with this in mind, we still have some altcoins that I'm looking to trade, and I'll cover that uh, right after. But uh, when it comes to long-term accumulation for altcoin, I don't think this is the spot right now. Okay, so moving on from the market leaders, Bitcoin dominance, Bitcoin Ethereum, let's look at altcoins. So a qu really quickly, a recap from last week's positions. Uh, which ones am I still holding? Which ones am I exiting? So first off is optimism. So optimism is pretty much still at the exact same level that I entered in uh, way back in, I want to say August. So uh, as you guys know, the main catalyst events for optimism, uh, you can catch them in my yeah top cryptos to buy in August video right here. So basically, uh, two events. Number one is the EIP 4844 upgrade coming to Ethereum by the end of this year. That's the tentative timeline. This is a 
gas upgrade that will introduce a new type of storage to Ethereum mainnet, which will make all Ethereum layer 2s 10 to 100 times cheaper. So Arbor, uh, Optimism and Arbitrum directly benefits from this. And uh, so that's number one. Number two is that Optimism is the main technology that's powering the OP stack, the, the OP super chains. So uh, because you guys must have heard of, you know, Coinbase's base layer two that runs on Optimism's technology. And technically speaking, because Coinbase doesn't have its own native token for the base network, Optimism stands to gain the most from that network's adoption. And there are also a ton of other new uh, OP stack chains that's launching just these couple months. So those are the two main catalysts coming for OP. And that's why I've been accumulating OP pretty much since August. And you see price has actually even uh, gone down a little bit from $1.40-ish to around $1.35. So overall, not much movement here on Optimism, and I'm still holding my OP position. Uh, very quickly on the on my stop loss for this position, that's right below this uh, swing low here at $1.05. So right about 25% down from here. And yeah, my entry is pretty close to current price at $1.35. And uh, yeah, I'm looking to take profit from this position after EIP 4844 goes live, which is probably two to three months from now. And that's basically it for OP. Uh, next up, I also want to cover the other leading layer two, and that is Arbitrum. So before we get into Arbitrum price, uh, Quickly, it's covered the Arbitrum Catalyst events. Also, number one is EIP 4844. It benefits Arbitrum Layer 2 just as much as Optimism. But the other major Catalyst events that just uh, dropped last month in September is that Arbitrum has a new incentive program. So here, Thor uh, tweeted it, uh, summarizes it really well. Arbitrum has a short-term incentive program which is dedicating 50 million ARB tokens to be allocated to protocols in the ecosystem. Essentially, uh, top DeFi protocols within Arbitrum will be getting extra ARB tokens that they can distribute to their uh, platform users. So this could act as a large ecosystem boost by attracting significant liquidity. So a uh, couple, couple things to note here. So Arbitrum's So Arbitrum's incentive program, you can find it directly on their forum. So this was a governance proposal that was proposed on September 2nd. And I believe this is uh, just getting voted through and there is a uh, date note on this. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, here. So uh fu approve the funding of up up to 50 million arb tokens through the end of january 31st 2024 so this is essentially uh yeah this is essentially the timeline i don't have the exact timeline for when these uh tokens start to get distributed but they will last until january 31st 2024 latest, which is uh, three months from now. So this is the timeline and the amount is 50 million ARB, which is right around uh, $45 million. Uh, now, how big of an uh, incentive is this? Well, the first Optimism grant back in 2022 was 42 million OP tokens. And this managed to grow the TVL on Optimism from 300 million to 1 billion plus just within one month. So we can see this on DeFi Llama. Here we have Optimism. And the Optimism OP grant happened in July uh, to August 2022. And you see here, after this OP grant uh, started, the TVL on Optimism grew from 300 million to 1.15 billion, all within one month. And then similarly for Optimism's price, 
during the same period, you see from July to August 2022, it grew from 50 cents all the way up to $1.90. So it took a 3.5x growth in price uh, within one month, just from this this uh, incentive program. And that's why uh, a lot of people are saying Arbitrum could see a major growth after this uh, incentive goes out. Now, obviously, this is going to last probably three months period. So uh, the exact effect of this, hard to say, uh, but definitely a bullish um, bullish incentive, bullish uh, upgrade coming uh, to the token. So keep in mind, this is a short term bullish event because these tokens will get released and essentially contribute to the circulating supply, which means eventually they, the tokens will go to uh, the DeFi platform users on Arbitrum and they will be sold in the long term. And that's why price is likely to retrace after this incentive program ends. However, within this period, likely price will increase. So that's um, the other catalyst event for Arbitrum. Now, really quick, let's look at Arbitrum price. You, you see the first wave of hype is already coming in for Arbitrum. So uh, price had a pretty significant boost from 80 cents to, to 96 cents. So a couple significant levels to watch here. Uh, we have this level, which is this previous swing low here back in June. And we have essentially just this absolute low here at 76. So you see this swing low here acted as pretty significant resistance here and price is starting to come down. So I think we will get another entry point a little bit lower on Arbitrum than current price. Uh, I'm looking to buy between this range. So you see these candles where we had a lot more consolidation here. Uh, and you can also say this is kind of a cup and handle uh, kind of pre-breakout pattern, accumulation pattern. So anywhere below 86 cents until 76 cents, that's going to be a buy zone for me. So buying within this range gives me a stop loss just below 76 cents. So let's say at 72 cents, right? So my target buy range is between 76 cents and, seven, and 86 cents with a stop loss at 72. And that gives me a very very tight range, very uh, very clear trade here. Uh, and in terms of take profit and timeline, waiting for this incentive program to fully propagate to the retail audience and for the TVL to grow, uh, let's say doing a 3x growth just like on Optimism, and for price to not necessarily grow 3x, but uh, at least have a pretty significant uptrend leading into January of next year when this incentive ends. And that's it for Arbitrum. And a couple more altcoins that I have been accumulating. So next one is DYDX. I have covered this uh, altcoin back in uh, September's uh, top altcoins video. Essentially, the catalyst event is for this is very clear. So the DYDX V4 upgrade is coming by the end of this year, probably even this month. So this is the biggest upgrade coming to DYDX because the for the longest time, DYDX didn't have any revenue sharing going to the token. But after V4 upgrade, they are completely revamping that and potentially 100% of all exchange trading revenue will go to the token stakers very huge upgrade for the tokenomics and a lot of people don't know about this yet because they have not published anything too direct they have only made teasers saying that oh we're not going to collect that revenue anymore and we're going to be fully decentralized and here are some potential parameters of how we can distribute all the revenue and we're going to have this new chain that you can stake on that will get the revenue but it it was never a very public announcement saying that you guys will start getting all the trading revenue. But I think uh, a lot of people are starting to catch on to this and just go and watch my top crypto to buy in September video. It outlines, uh, outlines it very in depth. And in fact, this is still the uh, one of the top three altcoins that I'm buying in October in our top three 
crypto to buy in October video that's gonna uh, get published tomorrow. Okay, so that's uh, DYDX and also a little bit on DYDX price. Luckily, people still haven't caught on. So uh, DYDX price is still at $2, which is uh, within my buy range. So I got in right around $1.95, which is uh, very close to current price. And in terms of stop loss and take profit, uh, $1.5 support must hold. This is going to be the stop loss for me. So my stop would be at $1, let's say $45 range, $1.40. And the first major resistance is at 2.6. Uh, but once 2.6 gets broken, I think we can very easily see price revisit uh, $4.4 and then $7 because uh, you see here from 2.6 to 4.4, there is nothing. There is no resistance at all. No, no price history within this range. So... Uh, I got in around $1.95, going to target at least 2.6, but I think 2.6 will be broken. And that's why my mid, mid, medium term targets after V4 comes out is going to be at least 4.4. So that's DYDX. And the other one that we have covered and is doing really well is MakerDAO. So Maker, uh, we have covered in our top altcoin in September video as well. So Maker has a subbed out very big upgrade that's uh coming out and just getting publicized basically they're revamping the whole tokenomics and they will launch actually six new subbed out tokens that can only be farmed with maker and with die so with these two initiatives uh, maker is starting its rally so we covered maker right around this a thousand dollar mark and i gave gave you guys this uh basically this entry point so there was a clear breakout retest here because you see uh, price had a very significant resistance here and we got this clear breakout and price revisited this level and started to see a bounce. So this is a breakout, re breakout retest pattern and also confirms the uptrend because this printed a higher low above the previous low at 600. So now the $1,000 mark acted as significant support now and you see price has already rallied to $1,500. So uh, I'm personally up about 40% on this position, but I am still holding it because uh, I'm targeting at least this resistance range between 1700 to 2000 So we're not there yet. And I could see another reload coming down. So if price comes down to, let's say, $1,200, I think that's going to be another buy for me because at 1200 I can target a stop loss right below 1,000 because this low needs to hold for the uptrend to continue. So uh, all, overall, still watching Maker, holding my current position. But if we come down to 1,200, I'm looking to load up a bit more. Okay, so that's Maker. And one other coin that have, we have mentioned last week was OX. Uh, unfortunately... Um, so on last week's live stream, just want to cover this really quick. So on this live stream here, I covered OX and how uh, basically OX is a new exchange that's launched by the 3AC founders. And they this coin is heavily, heavily manipulated, right? So uh, they use Uniswap V3 to essentially build these uh, liquidity price walls. So right here, this is what they do. They put all the liquidity at a certain level to support the price and essentially do guerrilla marketing. However, uh, the funny thing is that uh, Suju, <laughs> the 3AC founder, somehow got himself arrested in Singapore and sentenced to four months in prison. So literally, uh, price completely nuked through this price wall. So the price wall I was looking at was at uh, two cents. And you see price completely nuked through and dropped down to 1.2 cents. So uh, this is why you see the price is looking so volatile now because it's below that price wall, which means the liquidity is really bad now for this coin uh, before it gets back above 2 cents. So that's why I have actually exited my position at a pretty significant loss. It's just, you know, it is what it is. I took a bet and didn't play out but 
yeah, it, it's really kind of a a very sudden event. I, I could not have predicted this to happen. So uh, yeah, completely out of my OX position. Uh, it is what it is. So next one I wanted to cover is link. So this is actually very significant. So chain link uh, have a very big event that is uh, just going down yesterday and it's still going on today. And that is the Chainlink SmartCon right here. So SmartCon 2023 is uh, basically their annual event to uh, release their biggest upgrades. So this year they announced uh, the Chainlink data streams yesterday and also their expansion to support decentralized computing. So essentially the Chainlink data oracles now have these, uh, what's called a poll based notification. So instead of uh, the oracles feeding the data from off chain, pushing to these DeFi, protocol, uh, DeFi protocols through a schedule. So basically um, let's say every, every hour to give you the best prices to the smart contracts instead these smart contracts can directly ask for live updates every block from chainlink oracles so this is pretty pretty good upgrade actually very significant paradigm shift that will make uh DeFi integrations using chainlink much more powerful for for sure long term this is very bullish upgrade uh and also they have expanded to decentralized computing with functions beta and automation 2.0 all very good. So essentially, you know, more expansion to their Oracle capabilities, uh, mainly targeting DeFi. Now, uh, price for Chainlink is not doing well because a lot of people wouldn't understand exactly what this upgrade is. So if you don't develop on Chainlink, you wouldn't see this effect immediately. A lot of people are kind of bang, uh, you know, just waiting on some major partnership. Like, oh, Chainlink has partnered with. Google, Chainlink has acquired Google. <laughs> they, 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 Chainlink has, uh, you know, partnered with 1,000 new banks. That's the kind of partnership they all want to hear from SmartCon. But usually these conferences are more technology and uh, roadmap update focused, and that's why uh, usually they are sell the news events. So this is why uh, I have been actually shorting Chainlink <laughs> for. Uh, for the past while. So in our Discord, actually, you see uh, last week, I have been building a short position on Chainlink uh, and I gave my exact you know, outlook here. So SmartCon event on October uh, 2nd to 3rd, usually these do not introduce significant events that uh, are driving liquidity for retail and they are usually sell the news events. And also you see this uh, price range that is very clear that has been building for the past two years. So uh, the price top usually gets revisited and then it drops back down. So I was looking to short right around $8 with a target of $6. And I was doing these through my Fairdesk copy trade. And that's what I have been doing. So on Fairdesk, you see we have been uh, shorting chain link here. Can I expand this? Yeah, so I have been just building, you know, short after short. <laughs> um, you see, I, I built a lot of positions here because I didn't know exactly when the kind of top will be for this uh, short term rally. So I built a lot of position even from 7.5 all the way up to 8.2. So you see most of these are in profit and I'm still holding all of these because uh, Chainlink SmartCon event uh, is ending today and they will still announce some stuff today but after today basically all the news hype is going to end and i'm expecting price to get beat down again uh, so a bit on the price range you see the range highs is usually at 8.2 if you enter in a short every time that it revisits 8.2 you see price gets really quickly uh beaten back down and goes back down into a downtrend within the same week. So here we touched 8.2 again, and now I'm kind of riding this uh, just top of the range and waiting for it to go towards the bottom of the range. Now 5.7 is gonna be kind of a, a bit extreme. Ideally, I would like to target just something around 6.2-ish. I would be very happy. So if we can 
revisit just 6.2 on this short term, let's say correction after this smart count event, I will be very happy. So overall, still holding my chain link short, uh, very happy of how this played out. If you guys have been following me on Fairdesk, it's doing really well. So make sure to join our Discord with the link in the description and also join our Fairdesk copy trading profile. You can directly uh, copy all my trades there. Uh, yeah, and overall, looking to hold this position until at least around 6.2, maybe 6.5-ish. Okay, that's for Chainlink and just two more coins that I want, wanted to cover for today. So next one is going to be Polkadot. So uh, Polkadot has uh, a major bearish unlock coming up in uh, October 24th. So right here. So you see the first wave of uh, Polkadot's crowd, crowd loan auctions happened two years before, uh, two years ago. And this was uh, $465 million worth of DOT tokens that are locked up in these crowd loans, uh, in these top uh, Polkadot projects. And these tokens will be unlocked all on October 24th. So this is a huge unlock event happening in three weeks. And I have covered this in depth on my Polkadot video already on the channel. Uh, you can go ahead and, and watch it. I believe it's a live stream. Yeah, this one right here, Polkadot 2.0. So uh, on here, I outline my exact trade. So essentially, I'm looking to short Polkadot around these two unlock events. So the first unlock event happens on October 24th, and the second one on January 16th. First one is worth $450 million, and the second one is worth $120 million. These are the only two significant unlocks. So I think Polkadot will see a pretty big FUD event coming right around the end of this year. And in terms of Polkadot price, it's sitting right at uh, long-term support, basically all-time low support, uh, as, as long as you don't count the initial launch price within the first week uh, of launch. So right around $4 is the ultimate support that we have uh, had for Polkadot since its launch. Uh, if $4 gets broken, which we are testing right now, I think we will likely see much lower prices, maybe even towards the $2 range. Uh, so that's the kind of uh, potential short that I'm looking to take going into this parachain unlock event from end of October to early January. So if price can break below $4, I'm looking to short on the first bounce, ideally right at $4 and targeting uh, somewhere in the two to $3 range with a timeline of uh, late January after the second unlock. Because after the second unlock, price is probably going to rebound a bit because they also have the Polkadot 2.0 upgrade that's coming up, which is going to be short-term bullish in Q1 2024. So that's my outlook for Polkadot. Uh, that's my trade setup. Still waiting. I haven't pulled the trigger on this yet. Uh, but in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see a lot more FUD coming for Polkadot. And that's when I think the short could make sense. Okay, that's DOT. And then uh, the other one is... BNB, do I have BNB here? Yeah, here. So BNB, not exactly any significant news event that's uh, confirmed. Basically, you guys all know what's happening on Binance right now. Binance is under heavy attack. They are getting sued left and right by the SEC, CFTC, every single entity in the US. And even just yesterday, Binance was hit with another class action lawsuit over alleged market manipulation. Uh, they say that they are intentionally harming FTX entities. Uh, even they're they're finding every angle. Basically, uh, Binance they were the first to you know uncover this FTX fraud, and they are now getting sued for doing that. So uh, I have covered you know what the potential for Binance will be if they go down uh, by the end of this year. So you see this uh, Bitcoin crash signal here, the number one signal that could still go down by the end of this year is Binance getting another major hit. Uh, I think 
the timeline is looking quite tight from now until next March when the Bitcoin ETF will likely be approved. There's only about six months away, a six month window that BlackRock and Wall Street and the US government could attack Binance and cause a major crash on it. That's the potential event that could play out. And if you look at BNB price chart, that's also looking quite scary. So the $210 level is honestly an absolute support that we must hold. So you see, ever since February 2021, BNB has not broken above this, uh, below this level. So you see, uh, test here, test here, test here, a uh, little bit test here, and now we are sitting right at this price floor. I'm not saying this level will necessarily be, be broken, but if it does get broken, you see how much lower down this is. <laughs> there is no price action between 210 to $45. That, that's crazy, right? That's, that's uh, basically once, once 210 gets broken, the shorts are going to be flooding in. A lot of liquidations are going to happen and we are likely to see much lower levels. Not necessarily all the way down to 45, but definitely a very sharp and violent move down if $2, uh, 210 gets broken. And that's the outlook on Binance. So you can take the, kind of two sides of this. You can say, okay, Binance, I believe in them. Uh, they have a lot of money, which is definitely true. And they will protect $210 as the absolute full floor price. You can say that and you can say, okay, Binance is super cheap and I'm going to buy BNB. There is kind of a, a potential long position to be to be taken there. So if I buy BNB right now at two, uh, 210, I can place a very sharp stop loss right at, uh, let's say 190. If 190 gets hit, I just close my position because I know this floor price has been broken. That's the first potential trade. The other side is that you can wait for 210 to be broken. And then on the next bounce, you can look to short it because you know that uh, once 210 gets broken, we are likely to head much lower. So that's the sh potential short you can also take on BNB. So two sides of this that you can both take, depending on which uh, side of the camp you would like to bet on. Uh, but currently, I'm not shorting this just yet until this breakdown happens. And if I have to take a trade position on BNB right now, I would bet on the long side because I can have a very tight stop loss. But gun to my head, if you absolutely need a kind of uh, price prediction for where next BNB can go, I cannot tell you. Like Until this 210 level either sees a very significant bounce or a breakdown, I cannot tell you what the next move will be. So that's why I currently don't have a BNB position, but I am watching 210 very closely. If we see a breakdown, I'm totally down to short this. Uh, but if a bounce does come in and the timeline gets into early next year, I think Binance could just continue to hold above 210 and the crisis might be over. So we shall see, closely watching Binance. And in fact, the price of BNB is going to make a very significant uh, splash because it's it's the largest exchange. So it's going to be a very significant event to watch that uh, dictates the entire crypto industry overall. Okay, so that's uh, Binance coin and that's basically it. That's all the coins I wanted to cover for today. And let's go into Q and A's. Okay. So let's see. Hello, Mr. Bacon. Would you do a video about how to be an Android master? Actually, funny enough, I am doing a kind of personal story style video that's planned, uh, which is basically going to cover how I got into the space, how I do Android investing. So yes, absolutely. And yes, bull run likely to start within six months. 
uh, March 2024, when uh, Bitcoin halving is April next year, Bitcoin ETF is March next year. So yes, stars are aligned. Let's see. Uh, how long ago did this get recorded? So this is not a recording. This is a live stream. Let's see, let's see. Uh, I see mentions of this Jazz Me coin, but honestly, I've heard of it, but I'm really not a fan. There's too much spam mentions of it, so I, I'm not interested. Best layer two, Matic versus Arbitrum versus Optimism or wait for base coin. So first of all, I don't think a base coin is happening because Coinbase is a publicly traded company in the US and they cannot do it. Uh, best layer two, Arbitrum and Optimism are very close in terms of uh, DeFi adoption. So I will, I will tell you this, the top three that you listed there are definitely the top three. I cannot even pick one. Uh, I would say those three are tied for top one. There's no point in just getting one. If you're looking for layer two exposure, just get one third of each. Uh, but Matic is the top layer two for retail adoption. They don't do much DeFi adoption. Uh, Arbitrum is the top one for DeFi. Optimism is the top one for uh, layer two infrastructure, app chains, uh, creating kind of a layer two ecosystem where other projects can come in and build on their own layer twos. So those are the three main differences between these three, uh, these three, but I will pick all three. There's no point picking one. Let's see. MakerDAO versus Frax shares. Definitely MakerDAO right now. Uh, Peter Robinson says, I don't have Coinbase, but would assume that it's very solid. They may well do an airdrop, which will be huge. I highly doubt that they will do an airdrop because they can get in so much trouble. Uh, their whole thing is about being uh, regulated and being friendly with the U.S. regulators. So, And the fact that they're trading on a uh, publicly traded U.S. stock exchange, I highly doubt that they will. that would be the case. Uh, having said that, you can just gain exposure to Coinbase, their overall business, including the base layer too, by buying Coinbase stock. So, yeah, I don't see the point of them doing an airdrop, actually. Uh, okay, that's basically, yeah, I don't have much time, more time to do Q&As. So if you have uh, any charts that you would like me to cover, if you think there are any coins that I haven't mentioned for today, please leave them down in the comments on this video, and I will try to cover them uh, if, if it makes sense in next week's stream. And also make sure to join our Discord um, uh, with the link in, in the description or go to discord.gg slash virtual bacon and uh, join our copy trading campaign on Fairdesk. You can find all the links on virtualbacon.com. We have our copy trading uh, bonus right now. We have our Discord that have uh, trade signals and setups. I'm working through our free VIP program that will be fully live and ready sometime this week. And follow me on Twitter for more Crypto Alpha, Virtual Bacon 0x. And we also have our free newsletter, all you can find on virtualbacon.com. Okay, that's it for today's live stream. Hope you guys found some value out of this. And I will see you guys on the next video. And cheers. Thanks for joining. Bye for now.